I want to make sure you're clear and aware that listening is not the same as hearing. Hearing is automatic and doesn't require any skill. It's not a choice. Hearing happens after sound waves travel through the air and are picked up by your ear or a hearing mechanism for people with hearing loss. Hearing is passive, unlike listening that's purposeful, intentional, and is an active process that requires action. So make sure to pay attention on how you can become a better communicator, boost your credibility, increase your job performance, and strengthen your relationships. Over the years, I've taught these steps to over a thousand college students who are able to use these listening skills immediately to make a huge difference in their success in school, work, and life beyond. If they could do this, so can you. Listen up and let's get into this. The first step in the process of listening is where it all begins, receiving information. When we listen, we receive information, whether it's a verbal message that you can hear or a nonverbal message that you can see when you're able to see the speaker's face and body language. To improve your listening skills at this stage in the process of listening, you should first prepare yourself to actively listen. That means you should be ready to be able to distinguish between intentional messages and noise. Noise is a barrier of being able to hear what's being said, such as when there's loud noises. Noise can also be something inside you that's an internal distraction that includes your thoughts, how well you feel physically and mentally, your biases, and your preconceived ideas on the topic. You should also be aware and direct your focus on the purpose and goal as to the reason and relevance of what you're listening to. If you're listening to instructions of how to do something, your obvious goal should be to listen for the specific steps needed to correctly perform that task. Also, when being given instructions or directions, pay attention and listen to signals and cues as to when you should respond back. That way, the conversation can flow smoothly without you interrupting someone while they're speaking. In a classroom or a meeting, a signal would be when the speaker asks, are there any questions? If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments below and I'll answer you promptly. Let's move on to the second step of listening. That's interpreting what you take in through your ears and eyes and try to make sense and meaning out of it. To make improvements in your listening skills at the interpreting stage, you should try to identify the main points and supporting points of what you're listening to. If you're in a lecture or a seminar, many times there's a PowerPoint or a handout given to show you those points. When you're in a situation that doesn't have them available, you need to take physical notes, whether you write them down or type them out so that you can review them later and further interpret what you were listening for. Make sure you know who you're talking with and be aware of the situation or environment you're in to determine additional meaning to what's being said. This simply means be respectful to the fact that not everyone thinks like you do or acts the same in different situations. This is especially important when you're talking with someone who's from a different culture, whose accent and body language may be difficult to understand. Depending on the situation, some people will remain silent and not respond to you. This could be because they just want to be left alone, or they may need more time to formulate what they want to say and need a moment to gather their thoughts. Make sure to listen and tune into the tone and pitch of someone's voice, how loud or how quiet they are, and even the pace of how fast or slow they're talking. Once you tune into those qualities of how someone is speaking, you can start to interpret and gain a higher level of understanding of what they're saying and what they mean. The third step in listening is being able to remember and recall information using short-term and long-term memory. When it comes to short-term memory, unless you have a photographic memory, most people can only remember about four to eight pieces of information for about roughly 20 to 60 seconds, depending on the complexity of the information. Long-term memory is just that and can last a lifetime with even just a short exposure to information depending on what and how the information is applied as it's encountered. For instance, if you're taking notes on how to do a project or a task and then immediately review and are able to use that information to complete that task, the chances are much greater that the information will last much longer in your memory than just by taking notes. If you think your memory is not that good, there is a way to improve it with training and practice and you will need to use some techniques such as stacking and mnemonic devices. If that's not your thing, make sure to take thorough notes and make recordings when allowed that will allow you to repeat, rephrase, and reorganize the information to fit your learning preferences. And before I forget, I'd like to ask you a favor. If you find this information helpful, can you show it by tapping that thumbs up and consider subscribing to show your support? Thanks, I truly appreciate it. 
The fourth step in the process of listening is to evaluate what you hear, to determine how you judge the content as being credible, being complete, and if it's even worth listening to. To determine if something is credible when we first hear it, there's a tendency to try to decide if what we're listening to is believable based on what we believe to be accurate, inaccurate, true, or false. We also try to determine if the information is complete based on what we know about the topic and sometimes fill in the blanks by reading between the lines and or assuming the meaning of what's being said. After that happens, you'll evaluate if the information is even worth listening to by judging the value of that information as to whether it's good or bad, right or wrong, useful or not useful. To improve your ability to evaluate information at this stage, you should start separating the facts any assumptions and your judgment of what you're listening to. This comes in handy if someone is trying to persuade you with logic or by gaslighting you with false claims and hyperbolic statements. You also need to develop the awareness of your own biases and how your thinking can create barriers to properly evaluate information, whether it's from someone who is credible or someone who is not. And the last and final stage in listening is when you respond with a noticeable signal back to the speaker to let them know that you're at least somewhat engaged in what they're saying, whether it's a nonverbal cue by nodding your head or by verbally uttering short words that are not interrupting them, such as, yep, 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 I see, uh-huh, right, I'm listening, go on. To improve your abilities to appropriately respond to someone, you should, when it's appropriate in the conversation, ask follow-up questions that are clear and concise to bring out more information that can clarify what's being said or prevent any misunderstandings. A strong technique to use for this is paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is when you restate the information that they said in your own words to check understanding of what was actually said. An example of how to do this is to say, if I understand what you're saying is that, or, just to check that I'm clear about this, it seems like you said. Also, when responding to a speaker, take into consideration who the speaker is and the context of where you are. In other words, be respectful. If you suspect that the person is not credible or know that you disagree with the person or their topic, be mindful when giving feedback, whether it's positive or negative, about your beliefs and what you know about that topic. Your response can quickly determine if the conversation is even going to continue or end abruptly. To improve your listening skills, to become a better communicator all at once can be overwhelming and isn't realistic. Remember that to improve how you receive information, how you interpret it, how you're going to recall it and remember it, how you evaluate it and how you respond to it takes time and practice. Take it one step at a time and watch the video on your screen right now or click on the link in the description to learn more about how to become a more effective communicator. I'll be listening for you online soon.